Hey everybody, Hanuman Glendor here for another episode of Mung August. And um, this is number 19. Um, number 19, we have uh, Monster Infirmary. And um, Monster Infirmary is the first of many monster mangas you will see on this list. Um, um, and four, four of these monster mangas, uh, basically share the same world. Uh, four of them share the same world. Uh, Nurse Satomi's Monster Infirmary, uh, takes place in a Japanese city, uh, filled with monsters. Like, all, the ent entire city's population is monsters. Uh... And these monsters, um, they end up, uh, they, their bodies end up changing with puberty. And they act, they act, apparently they actually start off as humans, and they end up becoming monsters once they hit puberty. Um, which, that is an interesting idea. Um, I do, I do like that, I do like that idea that once you hit puberty, your body transforms and becomes a type of monster. Uh, that is an that is an intriguing idea. And um, Hitomi, the nurse of the school, uh, is there to pretty much teach uh, the students um, about their abilities, what they can do, how to control them, uh, so on and so forth. And... Um, Uh, yeah, so. Oh, man. Better. Uh, so. She just kind of helps out, um, a bunch of the students. Uh, she is adorable. I'll, I'll give her that. Um, and, uh, uh, trying to, th honestly, I'm going to be real with you people. Although this has an interesting, uh, although this has an interesting setup, I do like the idea of these monsters becoming, uh, of these humans becoming monsters once they uh go into puberty i do like that that is an interesting idea my issue with this is that we're not seeing it from the perspective of the people who are going through this i'm more curious about that how do they cope with this how do they cope with the fact that they're becoming monsters and like some of them are some of them aren't bad changes. some of them aren't bad aren't that bad uh changes like um one of them is a one of them uh is a uh a zombie girl of course um one of them is a one of them is a zombie girl and uh she can she can fall apart she can fall apart, put herself back together. That's actually kind. Of, that's actually kind of neat. It can be very. It can be very useful. Uh, and another one just ends up growing wings. Again, those can be useful. Uh, but then you get. Uh, then you get the students, um, like. The girl who grows incredible, like the girl who grows giant. She grows giant, and then there's uh, the other girl who continues to get smaller and smaller. Uh, that's got to be very inconvenient. And then there are other, and then there are other girls, like one that can uh, 
a one that can turn invisible, random, one that turns invisible randomly, and a boy who ends up growing boobs. <sighs> this is really weird. This is a very weird manga, and I wish we got these chapters from the student's perspective, because most of the time we are getting this stuff from Hitomi's perspective. Now, Hitomi is a great character. She is written very well. Unfortunately, because we never spend time with any of these kid characters, none of them end up being written well, with a cup with only a couple exceptions. Um and the if they want to have a story if they want to have a story where we focus on like the different changes these kids go through when they hit puberty then show us the kids and their reactions to this and how they handle it if you want to tell a story about Hitomi lusting after a four lusting after the four-armed science teacher then Tell that story. Don't make us think you're going to tell a story about the kids. Uh, that's distracting. Uh, honestly, honestly, if it weren't for the fact that it's connected to three other uh, mangas that I know and I love, if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't continue following it after volume three. Um, volume one, volume one and two, it's just basic stuff. Volume three actually does have something, uh, of a story with it. Uh, it actually has some interesting stuff happen in it, uh, with one of the characters that we've seen a few, that we see a few times throughout the first two volumes. Um, but that's all I can recommend, honestly. Um... I, I still enjoy I still enjoy it. I love it. Uh, I love it. It it just seems like it's a little unfocused. So I hope that the but it's still in its early stages. I hope that uh I hope that the writer uh Shakeo, I hope he ends up uh doing more of what he did in volume three. If he continues to give us reason to care about these characters, to care about these students. Give us a reason to care about them. If he continues, if he or she continues to do that, then I would have no problems continuing to read the manga. Uh, it would be, I would love that. That would be amazing. Um, I just hope that they end up doing that. Because um, the way it is for the first two volumes, it is not done well um there's still hope for it and there's still potential and it is very cur it is very curious it has me very curious and it has a very interesting plot uh i just want it to, i just want to see it reach it reach that full potential um but yeah that's uh number nine that's number 19 that's number 19 um and if you're wondering why uh, if you're wondering why it's on the list, why it's beating Dragon Ball Z, I haven't read Dragon Ball Z in years. Uh, that's not something I feel the need to go back and reread again. Uh, with uh, with Monster Infirmary, I've read each of these volumes like three times at least. So, there you have it. <laughs> so, thank you. For, thank you for watching. I'll be put. I'll be making another one, and then I'll be going to bed. So look forward to that. Take care.